Hello, my name is Ahmed. I'll be presenting a tutorial on using the mapper algorithm to do data analysis using the implementation in the Gioto TDA library. The mapper algorithm was introduced in this paper from 2007 by Singh, Memoli, and Carlson. And it can be summarized in this figure that shows a data set being analyzed using the mapper algorithm that produces what's called a mapper graph to capture the structure of the data. As we can see here, the data set in this example is sampled from a circle and the graph captures the loop representing the circle. And in order to obtain this graph, we start by mapping the data set to a simpler space. In this case, it's a line. And then we can cover the line using a set of overlapping intervals. Then the set of points within each interval can be further clustered to expose the structure in the original space. And then each node in the graph corresponds to one of these clusters and the edges are connecting clusters with overlapping elements. We will be using the implementation in the Gioto TDA library. And I will take you quickly through the example provided in the documentation. There is a very nice implementation that we can see here on this example with two circles, a set of points sampled along two concentric circles. And the way the mapper is implemented can be summarized in these four steps. So the data set D in space of dimension N is first mapped to a space of dimension M by this function F called a filter function. And then a set of cover elements here called U are going to be used to cover this embedding space. And then in the third step, the pre-image of each cover element is a set of points in the original data set is going to be clustered into a set of clusters C. And then these clusters C are going to be represented by nodes in the graph and the edges connect two clusters when the overlap is non-empty. In our example, we will be using the COIL20 data set. It's a simple image data set of these 20 objects that we can see here. And the data set was obtained by placing the objects on a motorized turntable and capturing a set of images using a fixed camera. Our plan for this uh, example is to map the set of images to a point cloud in some high dimensional space that supposedly maintain some of the structure and the similarity in the, of the images in this data set. And for the purposes of this example, we will be using a neural network and we will obtain each image as a point in a space of dimension 512. We then use this embedding obtained by the neural network to start the mapper uh, workflow First, we will use a filter function that embeds this data set into just two dimensions. We will use a dimensionality reduction algorithm to do that for us. And then we will proceed with the remaining steps. We will cover the space, do the clusters, and build the mapper graph. So let's see how to get started. I won't read all the details in the codes. The code is available on GitHub, and you can uh, clone this notebook and run it locally. And you can uh, tweak some of the uh, commands and see if you can get different results if you can try something new. Uh, the first um, real step here is to load a pre-trained neural network. Um, what I have here is a ResNet 18. And to use it as a feature extractor, we just replace the last layer, which performs the classification by just a sequential layer that will just output the features. And now we can load the data set 
using uh, the data loader from Torch Vision. And this will make it easier to make a simple transform on the images to fit the dimensions that the network expects as input. So the images are originally of dimension 128 by 128, but we need to make it 224 by 224. And we can easily achieve that um, in this way. We know that each object has 72 images, so we can use that as a batch size so that all the images of a single object are loaded in a single batch. This will make it easier for us to keep track of the objects being loaded. And now we can load the objects batch by batch and run them through the neural network model to get the corresponding features. And we will collect those in um, a numpy array called X and the corresponding labels will be in the vector Y. So while using the mapper algorithm, the algorithm is not aware of the labels, at least uh, the way it was described originally, you can run it on an unlabeled data set. And that's what we will use here. We will not make explicit reference to the labels until the very end to evaluate whether the result we obtain from the mapper algorithm actually explains the structure of the data set, which we know beforehand. So using the neural network, we can forget about the images for now and just use this uh, point cloud X, which as a reminder, it lives in a dimension 512. We will use a feature embedding to make it easier to run the mapper algorithm on a space of lower dimension. And this is a plotting utility that I will use to show you the mapping or the embeddings that I'll be using. So in the language of the Joto TDA library, I will now define my filter function. As you can see here in this line, I'm calling it my filter and it essentially executes this function here that I call my transform. It takes a data set X and runs one of these embedding or dimensionality reduction uh, functions. In this tutorial that I'm presenting now, I'll be using UMAP and you can learn about UMAP um, by reading this nice blog post, but I won't go into the details for now. It is um, similar to TSNE, but it is more uh, suitable for the example that we are presenting here. And you can take a moment to think about how to adjust the parameters for any of the embeddings that you'll be using. In this case, I'm using nine nearest neighbors for UMAP. And if I just run the data set through this transform and plot the result, I get this collection of um, clusters or groups of points with colors corresponding to each class. Um, that's how I configured my plotting function. So each color represents one object. And you can see that some objects actually look like circles, um, which uh, corresponds intuitively to what we expect as an object rotates around a turntable then it is uh, one degree of freedom. And in a high dimensional space, as the object starts at the point and comes back around the turntable, it should correspond to something like a, a loop or a circle. And it is very nice that we actually see that just by doing the feature mapping and the embedding in two dimensions. Uh, so let's see if we can get better information by using the mapper algorithm. So I will define the mapper pipeline or the pipe as they call it in Joto TDA. And it just defines a sequence of steps. First, the filter function that I described the embedding using UMAP in two dimensions. The cover is going to be a standard cubicle cover. In this example, it will just cover each interval um, by 20. Uh, intervals each, so each axis will be covered by 20 intervals, and the product of these is going to correspond to squares or rectangles covering this uh, image here, and there will be an overlap with a fraction of 
um, not too much, not too little. And of course, this depends on the scale of the problem. Um, but this value seems to work for me. The clustering algorithm is DB scan. This is a standard choice. And now we have the pipe. And to make the graph uh, nicer and to make it uh, in correspondence to the 2D plot that I just showed you, we can configure the colors of the mapper nodes um, by evaluating the graph before we plot it. We can compute it once. So we get what I'm calling here a temp graph. And in this temp graph, I can examine the nodes, see which data points uh, are represented by the clusters for each node. And I can specify what the colors should be to be similar to the colors in the 2D plot. So we just need to do this pre-computation of the colors. Um, and now we can do the actual step of uh, plotting the mapper graph. I just have to pass on the colors that I computed and specify what I want the tick values to be like, because my colors now correspond to the original labels, which is side information. The mapper doesn't know this. I'm just configuring this plot. And I also did a little trick here that I patch the library to show you the labels, as I will show you now. This is not what the original API provides, but for the purposes of this tutorial, it will help me to show you what's going on. And now um, this is a mapper graph. And as you can see, it's uh, it composed of a collection of connected uh, subsets. And if you count them, you'll find that there are exactly 19 collected, connected subsets. And some of them uh, look like cliques, some of them look like loops or uh, loops, uh, but maybe the embedding just show them in a different manner. Uh, some of them don't form loops, uh, but they are still connected. And as you can see by the choice of the colors uh, we pre-computed, we have uh, consistent colors for each connected component, which is very nice. This means that the mapper graph uh, discovers uh, which, uh, which points correspond to which object. So we can, we can do this clustering theoretically, even if we didn't know that the data set had 20 objects, but still there was a bit of confusion here and uh, using the labels that we, uh, we passed on to the plotting here, um, you can see on this tooltip, the last line says the node label. So for this node, all the data points had a class label 20. This was the object with index 20. Um, and here, this was object 16. So the uh, light orange color correspond to object 16, but the, this dark maroon color um, was object 20. And for some reason, uh, the embedding we chose and the clustering uh, is confusing these two classes. So that's why we have 19 connected components instead of 20. But still, this is, um, this is quite something. It's not, uh, not completely random. Um, all the other connected components had consistent labels. So for example, this light green uh, connected component had uh, data points coming from uh, the object with index 11 and so on. Um, so maybe we wanna take a closer look at what's going on here and to think how we can maybe adjust the parameters or the embedding to avoid that and actually expose a better structure of the data. So here I'm reminding you that this is the embeddings that we used. And as we can see already in the 2D uh, plot, uh, this light uh, orange and maroon uh, were confused perhaps there was a chance that the clustering would still be able to distinguish these points in high dimension, but this doesn't happen. Maybe I can uh, use a different cover, but let's see. Maybe we want to take a look at what these objects look like. So this is object uh, 16 and this is object 20. Um, well, they are geometrically uh, somewhat similar, but not so similar. So it's a question whether it makes sense that these were confused or not. And, and that's it. Um, uh, please feel free to tweak the parameters, see if you can get a better result. Let me know what you can get. You can use other data sets um, like MNIST or, or CIFAR, um, depending on what kind of uh, computational platform you have access to. It may be feasible to try other 
uh, data sets. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, the organizers of the TD8 uh, trial tutorial thon um, that encouraged us to record these tutorials. I had uh, help from Jose and Ethan, uh, and I'm grateful for that. And please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thanks.